Hey, what's up guys? Uh, long time no see. Sorry, I uh, don't make a whole lot of content. Um, definitely slacking in that department. I, uh, I get the TTMs and stuff, I just, uh, I fail to give you a uh, in look into my collection. Um, so I'm gonna try to get better at that part. And, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start doing, like, sequences of 12 players. I seem to ramble on a lot, so. Um, this is, uh, me and Garrett were talking, and, like, he was talking about his collection, and I was just talking about how I collect everyone. So, this is just like a preview of uh, the little guys, you know, like the guys that the NFL could have survived without. But you know, they they have foot they have, they got footnotes in there, you know, baby steps. Anyway, <clears throat> starting off, Jake Long, tackle. I uh, thought he was going to be sweet coming out of Michigan and went to the Dolphins and as of lately the Dolphins haven't been the best at developing players. Sorry Dolphins fans. I'm probably going to hate on a lot of teams, you know, doing all these little guys for the next couple episodes. But he signed two of two. Um, I believe he had a couple of injuries. I didn't pay a lot of attention to his career. Um... I had fallen out of the sport for a while, sport of collecting in general, and then I just kind of got back into it a couple of years ago, kind of like middle of the road of his career towards towards the downward spiral, as it were. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Uh, Kevin Dyson, wide receiver for the Tennessee Titans. He signed two of two. I actually believe I have more of him somewhere. But, I don't know where. Anyway, um, famous for getting drafted. I mean, Garrett, I don't know if you're going to like me or not, because I know you're a Titans guy, or Oilers guy, but this is what they turned into. But, I just kind of think that Jeff Fisher ruined his career, just like a lot of other players that Jeff Fisher didn't really help out, you know having a playbook from like the 1984 bears or something ridiculous uh not a, not a big fan of jeff fisher <clears throat> sorry guys joe ferguson also signed two of two um pretty much famous for handing the ball off to oj simpson a lot um let's like check out some of these stats here uh four touchdowns 12 Looking like career year was 75, 2,400 pa passing yards and 25 TDs. I mean, that's pretty good for that year, you know, but a lot of 9, 14, 16. It's a lot of, a lot of OJ. Not to, like, hate on these guys. I, I definitely appreciate uh, the autographs and obviously, like, putting their bodies on the line every Sunday. I appreciate that, you know. Obviously, they don't have to play the game, but they love the game, and I love watching the game. And I appreciate the autographs, and I love watching every game I can watch. Um, my wife thinks I have a serious problem. Maybe, maybe just a little bit, looking into it. But, uh, um, yeah, rambling, as I said. I feel like I got ADD or something. John Oferdahl, staple for the Dolphins for a really long time. He might be the biggest name in this pile right here. Um, he's actually a pretty good signer, as I remember. I'm, don't quote me on that, but I feel like all the cards that I sent him, he signed probably, well, I probably sent him like three different times, and all three came back fairly quickly. Um, but yeah, uh... He's kind of just got shafted in an era where the Dolphins weren't doing a lot. Like, obviously, Marino was there, but I feel like Marino kind of got shafted in general. Just like, how do you have Marino 
I mean, yeah, you had the Duper brothers and stuff like that, but, like, how do you not build a team around Marino? Like, you think of, like, Joe Montana. He has Jerry Rice and Roger Craig, and then you, you got, like, Steve Young, and he, Jerry Rice again, but Terrell Owens and Ricky, Ricky Waters, or you got Terry Bradshaw, Lynn Swan, Franco Harris, and, like, 12 other Hall of Famers, and then, what? John Elway, Shannon Sharp, and a bunch of Hall of Famers. Well, not a bunch of Hall of Famers, but you had some guys on defense. But, like, Brett Favre, obviously this is getting more into, like, nowadays age where you pass all the time. Back then, wasn't as big of a gunslinger league. But, like, weren't his Hall of Famers, man. You got the Duper brothers, and then you had, like, a slew of guys that were like career backup running backs on other that should have been career backup running backs Kareem Abdul-Jabbar NFL version guys like that you know <clears throat> I kind of just feel for the guy you know anyway uh, you got Steve Walsh um, pretty much famous for the U those are my boys if you ever watch 30 for 30s the U's are great but broke is my favorite um, one with Jimmy Johnson at the U, and then pretty much got drafted to come in and, like, battle it out with Troy Aikman, because, you know, Jimmy Johnson won with Steve Walsh, and obviously, like, brought in Michael Irvin, who was bringing in guys that he won with in college. I actually think Jimmy Johnson's probably, like, one of my all-time favorite coaches in NFL history. Like, if you had a top five, he would definitely be in there. Um, Bill Belichick. Not a bandwagon fan, but Bill Belichick is my number one. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> Not even, like, a huge Patriots guy. It's just, like, I've seen the Patriots win with, like, a heavy ground game with Corey Dillon. And then they have won with a two tight end set with Aaron Hernandez and Gronk. And then an air raid offense with... Who do they have? Wes Welker and Randy Moss. And Julian Edelman, I think, was there. I can't remember. And then, obviously, like, now it's more of just a West Coast offense with James White and, you know, a little bit of running and some shots here and there. Like, I feel like Bill Belichick just, like, breaks it down every which way. And I think it's crazy that the Browns got rid of him and the Ravens could have had him. And then the Jets, the Jets have him for a day, and then he retires. Like, with, like, writes his resume on a napkin. How is that napkin not in the NFL Hall of Fame? That is just crazy. I'm sorry, I'm rambling again, but, like, anyway, Jimmy Johnson, hell of a coach. I love the guy. I have yet to have a success from him. Not from lack of trying. He is, uh... Quite elusive for myself. <clears throat> I feel like I'm gonna have to go to a signing or something. I, I don't ever see him really at a whole lot of signings either. Sharif Floyd, he signed two of two. I got this during his rookie season, and I thought he was gonna be like a beast, this dude. But then he had. I don't remember what his injury was. But I remember he had to have surgery, and it was two of two. Uh, the surgery went really bad. I don't remember what happened, but he actually wound up suing the doctor. And I don't remember if he won or if it's like still in a legal battle. But he's he was they like ended his career essentially, and he's like suing that doctor for millions of dollars because obviously like. I don't even remember how many years he actually played, like, two, something like that. But, like, you go to have surgery, and obviously, like, it's kind of like Darius Geis. But Darius Geis, let's say Darius Geis, like, ended his career after that infection. Let's say it was worse than an infection, suing the doctor. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, sorry. Next, Jason Campbell. I actually seen on... Man, I can't remember what YouTube channel that I was watching the other day, but they were going through worst quarterback picks in the 2000 to 2018, and Jason Campbell was the worst in his class. But it's not like he's the worst. It's 
just like for who else was in the class and I mean like right here starting for the Raiders 2387 passing yards 13 touchdowns 8 interceptions it's not bad but as a starter that's not good either sorry I gotta shorten my light it's pretty wonderful <clears throat> um, I don't know, just a game manager, I guess I would say. That's, yeah, sorry, James, or Jason, forgetting his name. Um, Matt Castle. I actually like Matt Castle. Um, came in for an injured Tom Brady. I believe he hadn't started the game in, since high school. And what they do? 11 and 5, I think. That was the year the Lions went 0 and 16, I want to say. But I think I want to say he went 11 and 5. The well, the Patriots went 11 and 5. It was good enough to get him a monster contract with the Chiefs and he probably soon regretted it. They went to the playoffs that season, first year with the Chiefs and played the Ravens and Ray Lewis wrecked his stuff and then after that um, I believe that's when the Chiefs started getting gutted he had that that I want to say he was the quarterback when they had the season when they didn't have one passing touchdown to a wide receiver that's when they had Dwayne Bowe and stuff they started gutting the team get Andy Reid get Alex Smith Obviously, eventually get rid of Alex Smith for Patty Mahomes, which, you know, the way he plays, who can blame him? That's my boy. <clears throat> Ryan Tannehill. Again, like, I just don't think this guy really ever had a good shot. I just think he got the short end of the stick in Miami. Inscribed to Jake and... What? I think that's Roman's... 1323? I can't really read that. But, uh... Anyway, um... They picked up Devontae Parker to help him out, but, like... Guy can't stay healthy, underperformer, and they bring in Mike Wallace, and he was, like, what, a two-hit, two-year wonder in, uh, Pittsburgh. Um, went to Miami. It's... Man, Dama can sue from the Lions. He was a monster and then goes to Miami. It's like, I don't know what Miami is doing. I definitely don't think Adam Gase helped at all because, yeah, definitely. He was the guru in Denver when they had Peyton Manning. It was all him, none of Peyton Manning. That that's He's riding the coattails of what Peyton Manning did still. I'm the guru, you know, I, I can fix Ryan Tannehill or I can... I can help Sam Darnold, blah, blah, blah. That's why I actually kind of hate him having the job in Jet New York Jets because I feel like they will be good eventually. Like, got a bunch of weapons, and then he's going to be like, hey, I did all this, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, Andre Wadsworth. Um, I believe he had a knee issue or a couple knee issues that kind of derailed his career, but he was in the uh the draft with Peyton Manning and uh Ryan Leaf and I actually heard a crazy story that was like the Chargers kind of justified picking Ryan Leaf because they were like well if we were if Peyton Manning was still on the board we didn't think he was NFL ready so we were going to pick Andre Wadsworth anyway or something I don't remember who said that but I was like don't lie to my face like that man like everybody knows you Poop the bed, you know, with Ryan Leaf. What are you going to do? Like, the dude looked like a beast in college. That's why I don't like college as much as the pros. I mean, I still like college, but, like, you can be just a freak of nature in college, like, tearing it up pretty much like every Heisman winner ever, just about, and then you go to the NFL, and then, you know. I mean, there's a couple of obviously good Heisman winners, Charles Woodson, and, you know, like, Carson Palmer wasn't too bad, but, like, you look at, like, Matt Leiner. Troy Smith, RG3, that was more, I kind of blame that on Mike Shanahan, put him in while he's hurt, but like, the list goes on and on of great college players that were just, you know, like, man, what are, what are you, 
doing out there. Denard Robinson last two years. You know, guys just pff, gone. Um, Andre Ware, um, definitely the worst for me. Charles Rogers, because I'm a Lions fan, and it hurts my heart every year being a Lions fan. Anyway, Todd Blackledge. Um, I believe he wasn't the only one to pan out, but he was in that, I want to say he was in that class, was it 83? Where it was Marino and Jim Kelly. I want to say Ken O'Brien. Man. I'm having a heck of a time remember who was in the, it's pretty much the best quarterback draft class of all time. Um, Dan Marino obviously is the man. What he, he threw for 5,000 yards in like, what, 80 something. And it didn't happen again until the 2000s, you know, like, he was pretty much Drew Brees back then. So if Drew Brees is throwing for 5,000 yards every season, you put Dan Marino, today's game, he'd probably be throwing for six, you know? Mark Bruner. Uh, tight, pretty much just a basic blocking tight end. Um, that's numbered 3207 out of 4,000. So he uh, definitely probably had a hand cramp, you know? But... Um, I mean, he was the starter, but, like, Pittsburgh, they're not obviously known for passing to the tight end a whole lot. And you're pretty much just paving the way for running backs. You know, you get your Jerome Bettis and your Willie Parker and your Le Le'Veon Bell and your Franco Harris. They're pretty much known for that run game, you know. So, like, as a tight end, you like, off the top of my head, their best tight end is, what, Heath Miller? And he ain't never going to sniff the Hall of Fame. Nothing against Heath Miller, but just, like, the stats aren't there and blah, blah, blah. But this is why I'm only doing 12 players at a time. I will hopefully shoot a video again soon. Because um, I just like to ramble. Look at that, 17 minutes already. All right. Talk to you later, YouTube. See you, Garrett. These are my no-name guys, lower-name guys. You know what I mean. All right. Love y'all. Bye.